Dimensional analysis is a specific process that we use to convert units. Um, I like to introduce this at this point in time because the process is very similar to multiplying fractions. This particular process of dimensional analysis is super common for use in mathematics, but also in a lot of the sciences. Um, chemistry teachers in particular love dimensional analysis and really wanted the math classes to be able to explain how this process worked. Uh, how does dimensional analysis work? Well, let's start with something that maybe you would be able to know here anyway. Let's suppose that I have 24 inches and I want to convert this into feet. Now. You may know the answer already is two feet. That's fine. For all of the problems that we're doing today, keep in mind that we're introducing you to a new process. So definitely practice the setup and other things, even if you have a different method that you might use to come up with your final answer. When we do dimensional analysis, what we're essentially going to be doing is multiplying by one. But what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by one in a really clever way. We're going to multiply by a fraction that is equal to 1. Now, keep in mind that normally you could do something like this. 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. So if we multiplied by 4 divided by 4, we wouldn't change anything. However, when we're doing unit conversions, we can have not necessarily exactly the same number, but we can have things that have the same value on top and bottom. So just like 4 divided by 4 gives us a simplification of 1, if they have the same value on the top and bottom, we can think of it as multiplying by 1 and not having changed the original problem. All right, so let's see how all of this works. If we go back to our example here, we want to change 24 inches to feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with 24 inches. This process, again, is just like multiplying fractions, so we want to rewrite this expression as a fraction. We can rewrite this as 24 over 1. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply in a very clever way so that what we're doing is just like multiplying by 1. Now, in this case, we have inches and we want to get rid of them. So we're going to put inches as our value on the bottom. The thing is, is that our units follow a lot of those same processes that we talked about in multiplying fractions. And that is, if we had something on, in a numerator, and something in a denominator that they had in common, we could divide it out. And that's essentially what we're going to do here. The inches on the top and the inches on the bottom are going to divide out. Now, we want to go from inches to feet. So we're going to put feet in the numerator. The next thing that we want to do, now that we have different looking units here, what we want to do as we fill this conversion factor in is we want to make sure that they have the same value. So any equivalency here that you know is something that we can plug in. One conversion factor that you probably are aware of here is that one foot is equal to 12 inches. And as long as you know this conversion equivalency, I can put one in the numerator and one in the denominator and it'll have the same value. In this case, my inches are gonna need to go in the denominator. My feet are gonna go on the, in the numerator here. Now, we can follow our rules in terms of I can divide the top and the bottom both by the inches, and those units are going to go away. And what I'm left with is 24 times 1 foot divided by two, 12, excuse me, 1 times 12 is 12. The units are gone. And what I have here is 24.1 feet over 12, and I can divide the, this, or 24 times 1 foot, just kidding, is 24 and I can divide by the 12 and come up with two feet. Um, the way that we set things up is gonna be really important. Let's suppose that I had six feet and I wanted to know how many inches is, this is. This time I'm going the other direction. The process for setup is gonna be exactly the same. We're gonna start with six feet and we're gonna put it over one so it looks like a fraction. And then I'm gonna multiply by a clever conversion. In this case, the feet are on the top and I want those to divide out and go away, so I'm going to put feet on the bottom. And this time I want to convert to inches. I can still use this common um, conversion factor or equivalency. One foot is equal to 12 inches. This time the feet are on the bottom, so the one's going to go on the bottom and the 12 is going to go on the top. 
Now I can divide my feet out. On the top, I can do 6 times 12 divided by 1 times 1. And I end up with 72 divided by 1, or 72. And the unit that remains is the inches. This process works uh, for any different type of conversion. We could, for example, say that we had 3.3 pounds of something and we wanted to know how many ounces that is. Well, start with the value that we know. In this case, our 3.3 pounds. I have pounds in the numerator, so I'm going to put pounds in the denominator to divide out and I want to end up with ounces. In this case, we can go to um, use the fact that the in, sorry, that the one pound is equal to 16 ounces, and I can put that information here in my conversion fraction. Um, one goes with the pounds, 16 goes with the ounces. My pounds can divide out. I'm left with 3.3 times 16 multiplying across the top, Multiplying across the bottom, I have 1 times 1 gives me 1. 3.3 times 16, you can pull your calculator out for that, that's fine. Um, 3.3 times 16 is 52.8. And my ounces were what was remaining, and so I can end up with 52.8 ounces. Now, if you're not very familiar with the English system, uh, ounces can be uh, abbreviated with OZ, and there's a series of other things. I have put together a common conversions table uh, that's available in the modules for the unit, and you can use that conversion table if you aren't familiar with what some of the abbreviations stand for, or if you don't know some of these more common, um, common conversion fit, um, values. Now let's suppose that I have something like this. Let's suppose that I have two days and I want to know how many minutes that is. Our setup is going to be the same. We start with our two days, put it over one so we have it as a fraction, and then I'm going to multiply by something to divide out the days that I don't want. So I'm going to put days on the bottom. Now in this case, I don't know how many minutes there are in a day. So I'm not going to be able to set this up in a single step. But I do know how many hours there are in a day. And so because all we're doing is multiplying by one, we can multiply by as many of these conversion fractions or conversion factors as we want. So here in this case, I know that there's 24 hours in one day and I can get my day units to divide out. Well, I didn't really want hours either, so now that my unit is at hours on the top, I can put hours on the bottom to divide it out. I do know how many hours and minutes are equivalent. There are 60 minutes in one hour. Do double check yourself here. A lot of times people go fast and they might put the 60 on the bottom, but one minute is not equal to 60 hours. It's real important that our values are equivalent here. Now, in this case, the hours can divide out, and the unit that remains now is minutes, which is exactly what I want. Now, all we have to deal with at this point is the numbers. In this case, I'm going to do 2 times 24 times 60 on the top, and 1 times 1 times 1 on the bottom. 2 times 24 times 60 is 2,880 divided by 1. My units that were remaining were minutes. Divide 2,880 by 1, and I get 2,880 minutes is how many minutes there are in two days.